Good morning, Mayor and Council. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning to, to propose item 8H, a rate ordinance for the water and wastewater utilities. We're proposing amendment of chapters 47, 55, and 60 of the municipal code involving sewage, utilities, and general schedule of fees. We're, we're proposing that, thank you, Billy. We're proposing a public hearing for August 26th and potential adoption, final action on September the 9th. We, we find that the proposal is competitive with other cities with whom we normally benchmark. The fees that we're presenting here are our own future fees and our current fees in contrast with other cities' current fees. We will implement for the first time what's called an inclining block structure to help encourage water conservation. We're very excited about this part of the program because it is a piece of the water conservation ordinance you passed last year in the implementation of that program. Finally, it, the funds will be used for major capital construction. We face a, a large capital program over the next several years. Preparing this year will begin by starting design of a second pipeline, pardon me, pipeline to Lake Atoka, doubling the capacity of one constructed 50 years ago this year. Uh, this first slide indicates really what Ms. Slaughter was discussing. The main driver behind this financial plan and the revenue increases, the rate increases that we're asking council to consider is really driven by the capital needs of the utility. And this, this slide, in, in very simple terms, just illustrates the demands being placed on the system and how they're going to be met over time. We're, we're a fixed revenue or fixed cost model, I should say where 80% roughly of the utility's costs are fixed, but our revenues lag significantly. So utilities across the country in Oklahoma City, frankly, is a little bit ahead of the curve here, are increasing their fixed revenue streams to recognize this and to put us in a better financial position as we approach capital markets. So with that, let me turn it over to my colleague, Jennifer Ivey, to talk more about the rate structure and the means by which we charge our customers. Jennifer? All right. Thank you, Rick. Um, so as Rick mentioned, uh, we are looking at a new rate structure that is made up of blocks for the volumetric portion, um, and this encourages conservation. So we decided to look at it in two different phases. The first phase would be a two-block structure. For residential customers, the first 10,000 gallons that they use each month would be at one rate, and then anything beyond 10,000 gallons in their monthly bill would be at a higher rate. Uh, for non-residential customers, we're basing those blocks on their average winter consumption. So this is the consumption that they have in the months of December, January, and February averaged together. And that's an indicator of what their inside usage is. So we're trying to take the irrigation part out of that. So the non-residential customers would get that value, that average winter consumption value at the lower rate, and then they would pay more if they used more water than that um, in each month. Uh, and so this helps us with uh, non-residential. One of the biggest challenges is that you have so many different types of customers. Phase two, we're looking at um, implementing a third block. Um, so we're trying to step the customers into this block structure since they've been on a uniform structure for quite a while. Um, and so at, when we get to phase two, um, we would look at the third block and we would try to decide, um, do the current blocks, the first two blocks make sense still? Is 10,000 still the right amount for block one? Or do we need to look at lowering that? Um, maybe it's the first 8,000, and then the second block may be the next 7,000, and then the third block may be everything beyond 15,000. Um, and then same thing for non-residential. This is the rate design that we're proposing. We're looking at the next three years, uh, and so we're phasing that in from having the uniform rate of $2.65 per 1,000 gallons for residential um, to by 2017, a rate of $2.89 for the first 10,000, and then $3.50 for anything beyond 10,000. 
And so you can see that we've tried to create a smooth transition toward that um, structure three years out. For non-residential, uh, you can see there multifamily um, would pay $271 for the up to their average winter consumption and then $3.12 for any usage beyond that. And then ultimately they would be at 281 for that first block and 340 for the second block. 